We're going to turn the service over to the pastor. God bless you, sir. Amen. Praise the Lord. And you know, the Bible also speaks to us that the word of God is not of any private interpretation. Yes. So we're not really into those private revelations. Amen. Because just because you have a thought, that doesn't mean it's of God. It's true. It has to, has to match up with what the Bible actually teaches. Yes, it does. And uh, if the Bible doesn't say something, you can't go around saying that it does. Mm-hmm. Okay? You got to throw, that's my opinion out there. Right. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to our Bible reading tonight. But we do want to let you know, okay, before uh, we get into the message tonight, that on Monday, okay, Monday uh, afternoon or noon, we're going to have a barbecue at Santee Lakes. Okay, so we're going to uh, meet there and we'll barbecue and you're able to go fishing there. I think even without a license, you have to pay for a little permit in that area, in that uh, park. But you don't have to have a state fishing license. So if you want to come and join us on Monday, and we'll make that like an OLR activity. So even if a person hasn't been to church, they're welcome to come and join us on Monday. Amen. Okay, we'll barbecue. And uh, have a good time there. Beautiful place. I believe you have a day off because of Columbus Day. Is that correct? Okay, so come enjoy uh, that Monday with us, okay, out at the lake, and and, uh, we'll have a good time. Let's go to to our Bible reading tonight. We're going to be in the book of Genesis. Excuse me, let's drop back. I don't want to read in Genesis yet. We'll read there in just a moment. Let's go back to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. And I want to begin reading in verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. And then we want to read just one verse of scripture. And uh, out of Genesis chapter 32, and we'll read verse 26. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And I want to preach tonight with the help of the Lord about Christian character or character matters. Let's go ahead and look to the Lord in prayer. We'll ask his blessing this evening. Reverend Walker, sir, will you pray, please? We thank you, Lord, Father God, for such a time as this, for allowing us to come here before your presence. I ask now that you receive our thanksgiving and that you launch in the matter of God afresh. Make preaching easy. Send forth your word. Give us all ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say unto the church. And we thank you and honor you for us in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray these things. Amen. Amen. Okay, I want to begin tonight by uh, telling you where, where I got the title of the message, the character matters, Christian character, okay, and uh, especially the the character matters. Years ago, there was a president by the name of Bill Clinton, and he's not known for a whole lot of achievements, okay, and if your politics uh, aren't matched up with mine, just bear with me. He's not known for a lot of achievements, but he's known for having an adulterous relationship with one of his interns. That's basically how people know about this man. Well, because of some things that took place, he had to go before a grand jury and uh, he had to give testimony and in his testimony, he lied. And he said, I don't know that woman. I've never had a relationship with her. But the facts proved that the man was not telling the truth. Okay, now if it would have been anybody else, normal uh, person like you and I, we would have, probably gone to jail for lying to the grand jury. The politics being what it is, he basically got off scot-free and people began to criticize and say, how can we allow this to happen? We have a president just blatantly lies and nothing is done about it. And 
Others who defended him say, well, it doesn't matter about that as long as he's doing a good job as president. And the response to that was, no, character matters. Yes, yes. You're going to lie about that. What else are you going to lie about? Right. Or what else have you lied about? Well, that is true. Our character matters. Yes. Christian character matters. We read to you, first of all, this evening out of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14, beginning there. And it said, to follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Well, holiness is more than an outward appearance. Yes. Holiness is more than coming to church. Mm -hmm. It's more than knowing religious cliches. It's more than knowing about God. Holiness, brother and sister, is something that is within our hearts when our lives are directed by God and by his word and by his spirit. Yeah. Yes. Are you with me tonight? That's holiness. God is directing us and our lives by his word and his spirit. We are to be holy as God is holy. God is a holy God. If God is directing us, then God is directing us in the holiness and his spirit. Jesus taught us about the Holy Ghost and he said that the Holy Ghost would lead us and guide us into all truth. Yes. Didn't he? Amen. The Holy Spirit leads and guides us into truth. God leads us and guides us into doing right. We can't commit sin and say that we are being led and guided by the Spirit of God. That's not true. God doesn't do that. Jesus even taught us to pray to the Father. And part of that prayer was, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God does not lead us into sin. Okay, so we... we uh, uh, read about these two men in the Bible out of Genesis chapter 32. We began to read there about Jacob, but we could go back and we're talking about two brothers uh, in Genesis with, with uh, Cain and Abel. Well, we got two more brothers here in Esau and Jacob. And we could go and we could learn about them in the book of Genesis. And the Bible tells us about them and how that they were the grandsons of Abraham and the promise of the blessing that was given to Abraham and to Isaac would be passed on to one of them. And we also know that it was customary that the oldest son would be the one that would get the inheritance. But in this case, their mother had been told previously that the younger, the, excuse me, the older would serve the younger. In other words, the younger Jacob would be the one who would have the inheritance. You know, we know that God is a God that knows everything. God knows what's going to happen. God knows the way that people are. And God in his grace and his mercy, he gives people opportunities anyway. God knew the way that they would be. God knew their attitude toward him, just as God knows about you and I and our attitudes toward him, toward his word, toward his work, yes. toward his people. Yes. Okay, God knows all about it. That's right. People put on facades and people may try to cover things up, but there's nothing that is naked. Nothing, brother and sister, that, excuse me, nothing that is hid, but everything is naked and open yeah. to him with whom we have to do. And the Bible yeah. tells us in the book of Hebrews chapter four, beginning in verse 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and of marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. God even knows our very thoughts and our very intentions. Amen. Why are we doing what we're doing? Yes. Why are we acting the way that we're acting? Yes. Now we, the Bible tells us that every man's ways are right in his own eyes. That's true. Okay. And every man is, is quick to, to uh, tell uh, of the good in his own life, but a faithful man who can find. Thank God yes. that we can be a faithful man or woman yes, to the Lord. Amen. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. sight. Hebrews 4 and 13. But all things are naked and open under the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Well, we could learn about Esau. And we know, I think all of us uh, who know about this, these two, two men in the word of God, that he was concerned with the physical. He was not, he was a carnally minded person person 
He was not a spiritually minded person. He was concerned with the physical and he was concerned with filling his belly. He was with, concerned with uh, finding satisfaction in the things that he could do in the world. Okay, the things that uh, enjoyments that he could have in the world and and and, and uh, uh, what he could eat and, and, and these kind of things. Brother and sister, you know, if, if we seek first the kingdom of God, yes. all of these things will be added unto you and I. Yes. We just took up an offering. And some people don't give any offering. Can God take care of you? Yes. God can take care of you. Yes. God can supply all of your need according to his riches in glory. Yes. We'll seek God and put God first in our lives. Okay, not only will God meet our need, but God will give us wisdom to stop wasting the money that he has blessed us with. It's true. Amen. Amen. Okay? Now, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna get tight on somebody, it ain't gonna be God. It'll be McDonald's. It'll be Burger King. Sorry, I ain't gonna come see you no more. Not for a while. I'm trying to save money. Okay, well, you don't. You don't get ahead financially by cutting God off. Okay, that's the wrong thing to do. I'm just trying to teach you something there. You apply that in your life. Well, you know, uh, I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do what I want to do. Well, you can do whatever you want to do. But we're telling you from experience. Okay, if you put God first uh, in, in your, uh, your giving and in your finances, God will take care of you. Amen? God will take care of you. Well, this man... Uh, wasn't trusting on God to take care of him. He was looking to his own physical ability, what he was able to catch, what he was able to, to go out and, and hunt and all of these things. And he wasn't really concerned with the blessing of God, not at this point anyway. He wasn't concerned with the inheritance that that uh, 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 he would uh, normally receive uh, from his father, Isaac. But Jacob was a little bit different. Jacob Maybe he was more concerned uh, with the things of God and he had a, a more of a reverence for God. But there were some things that were wrong with the character of Jacob. Though he had a reverence for God, though he was concerned with the things of God, he still had some character flaws in his life. Hence the name Jacob, which meant a supplanter or a deceiver. He was a deceiver, brother and sister. He was a manipulator. He would manipulate people. He would twist things in his favor. Right. You know, we can't do that. God knows everything. Right. We have to be, not, not only do we have to be honest with God, we have to be honest with ourselves. Yes. We're not going any further in God or with God. Okay, unless we come to the point in our lives when we're willing to come clean and be honest. Yes, Are you here? Yes. Sir. Honest with God and honest with ourselves. The Bible teaches us one of the parts of repenting of sin and making things right with God is confession. And confession is good for the soul. Yes. Just to make things clean, make things right. If you're wrong, God, I'm sorry. If you're wrong against somebody else, I'm sorry. Make it right. Okay, make things right before God and before other people. Well, Jacob was a, a deceitful person. He had some character issues. He was a manipulator. But you know, God was not going to allow this man to get this inheritance and stay that way. Yes. You know, we have an inheritance. Huh? We've got, we've got uh, an inheritance that God has preserved for you and I. Huh? God is coming back for a church without spot yes. and without blemish. Right. He's not going to let us stay the way that we've been. Right. Yeah. Are you here? Yes. Corruption is not going to inherit in corruption. Right. Yes, sir. Come on, church. God is working on each and every one of us. And he's getting these things out of our lives that are unlike him. Yes, Jacob Brother and sister uh, tricked his brother and deceived his brother and got the birthright from him. Okay. And he also deceived 
uh, uh, Isaac, he deceived him and he got that birthright. He had the birthright, but you know, the birthright did not bring the blessing of God. It did not bring the change that needed to take place yes. in his life. Right. It's more than having a, a title. It's more than saying I'm a Christian, brother and sister. We need to let Christ and the Spirit of God work in our lives and change us and truly make us Christ-like. Yes. yes. Come on, church. Truly make us, not just calling ourselves a Christian. Not just coming to church. Yes. Well, I go to church. Well, I'm a Christian. I've been a Christian a long time. Have we been Christ-like for a long time? Yes, sir. Okay, have we been Christ-like? Yes, he had the birthright. But you know what, brother? Said that he needed more than the birthright. He needed the blessing of God. That we know that this man would leave home. And uh, we knew that there would come a time later that he would uh, meet up again with his brother. But something happened in between those two times. Okay, something happened in this man's life. And sometimes maybe we don't think about this. There was, there was a time that this man uh, met a, a young lady by the name of Rachel and he wanted her to be his wife. Okay, he went there to, to uh, his mother's side of the family looking for a wife and it all worked out like God had directed him and he thought, man, I'm gonna marry this girl. God, God it's all worked out for me. I came over here like I was directed. And then there came a man into the picture by the name of Laban. Yes. And you know how Laban was? Laban was a lot like Jacob. He was a manipulator. He was deceptive. He told uh, Jacob, if you work for me for seven years, I'll give you my daughter to marry. And here he is with Rachel all in his eyes. Oh yeah, I worked for you for seven years. Seven years was up. Huh? Laban brought another daughter. Right. Jacob ended up marrying her, had to work seven more years. And there was issue with them between their cattle and things like this and, and some deception that was, was happening. And he maybe was reaping some of what he had sown in his life. You know, we want to blame everybody else. Oh, this Laban, he's a devil. Hey, oh, this, this situation, we don't want to look at ourselves right. and the way that we have been that have brought us to that point in our life and put us where we are. Yes. Hey, you know, we have to learn from failure. Yes, sir. Come on. Yes, sir. We have to learn from what we have experienced in life and and uh, maybe things haven't turned out the way that we wanted them to. Well, maybe it's a good time to stop and to reflect. Yes. Not on somebody else, but on ourselves yes. and our true Christian character. Yes. Okay. Well, it was a good time for him to think about the way that he had been. And, you know, uh, he was on now on the receiving end of, of some things that he didn't like. And he now, though he, uh, you know, in the, maybe in this time he learned, you know, I need to change. I need to not be a deceiver. I need to, I need to let God build character in my life. I need to, I need to have more than a, a, a title. Uh, I need to have something from God. Yeah. I need to really seek God in my life yeah. until God changes me. Amen. Until God changes me. He, brother and sister, needed God to help him. He needed, brother and sister, God, not only not to help him only with a situation, but more importantly, for God to help him with himself. Yes, man. And God met him. And he would not let go, as we read unto you, until he received the blessing of God. Now we look at that and maybe, yeah, maybe we want to prop up Jacob, but maybe we want to glorify him. Brother and sister, it was God who, who intervened and God who gave him the opportunity to change. And God not only gave him the opportunity to change, God is the one that changed him. Yes. God touched him and changed him. Yes. Are we here? Yes. You know, we ought to give glory to God for being saved. Yes. 
not be self-righteous and well, I've been saved and I'm and I'm this and I'm that. One for the grace of God, we'd be dead and in hell or on our way there. Every one of us. Yes. We don't have no room to boast. Right. If we're gonna glory. Let us glory in the Lord. Hallelujah. It's glory in God and what God has done. Okay. And this, he had some things to learn. God had to build some character in this man's life. He now sought God. He needed, he needed God's help. He needed God to change him. God met him. And when God saw Jacob's willingness now to change or to really repent, you know, we get caught and we want to say, I'm sorry, God. We get in trouble. We want to say, I'm sorry. But are we willing to change? Are you here? Are we going on the same way that we've always been? Hmm? You know, God can't teach us anything if we think we know everything. Huh? We have to lay that pride aside and realize. The Bible tells me if I think I know something, I know nothing as I ought to know. We need to lay aside that pride and let God be the one who touches our life and, and begins to change. We need to have a willingness to truly repent, to no longer look at our own ways, but to truly begin to depend on God. And when he was willing to do this, when he stopped looking at his own abilities and his own ways and what had, had worked for him in times past, huh? did it get him the blessing of God? No. It got him to reap what he experienced with Laban. It got his brother on his trail. Right. But it wasn't until God changed him yes. that he went from being a deceiver right. to a prince that has power with God and with yes. man. Amen. Okay? God saw his willingness now to repent. And God blessed him and changed him. It's not that Jacob became righteous on his own that day. But Jacob realized that, that God, by the things that God allowed to happen in his life, that he really needed to get serious about God and stop being self-righteous. Yes. You ain't going to get to heaven by your own ability. It ain't going to happen. That's right. It ain't going to happen. Well, God touched him and God changed him. He was no, he is no longer a deceiver but now a prince of God he would walk different it means he would live different yes come on yes changes and changes there would change yes. you know some of you think that I'm hard and, and I'm overbearing I worked for a man that was the founder of this organization for 10 years he did not let me make excuses for failure in not only in my work that I did for him but he did not let me make excuses for failure in my life. If I was wrong, he would tell me that I was wrong. If my work wasn't up to par, he would tell me. Are you here? Huh? The best things that he ever did for me, just like my dad when I turned 18, huh? got out of high school, on, graduated on Friday, Saturday morning. I looked at him. He's out in the backyard. He said, what you going to do? I said, what do you mean? He said, you ain't staying here. Best thing he ever did for me. Okay? We're not trying to be hard. But brother and sister, God expects us to be serious. Okay? About our relationship with him. He expects us, brother and sister, to allow him to truly be the Lord of all of our life. You know, my Bible tells me that I'm to bring even my thoughts in subjection yes. to Christ. Yes. Okay? If my thoughts are in subjection to Christ, that means my attitudes are in subjection to Christ. True. Yes. My person is in subjection to Christ. Yes. My personality is in subjection to Christ. Can I get a witness? Yes. Does God want me acting this way? No. I can't act that way. Hmm? Anyway, let's go on. We need to be serious about our relationship with God. Okay, God wants to bless each and every one of us. He wants us to change. He wants things. Well, I don't think I need a change in my life. My friend, God can so 
drastically change us. And we do need to change. Yes. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes. And we can all be made better. Even when we're here tonight and we are born again, saved and filled with the spirit of almighty God. Praise God. Yes. Okay. But brother and sister, we're forgetting those things that are behind. Huh? Yes. We're reaching forth to the things that are before. We're yes. pressing toward that mark. Okay, we are absolutely, brother and sister, pressing on in God. We are, we are allowing God to change us and to bless us Amen. and to make us more like Him. Yes. Talking about Christian character. Character matters. Yes. We're getting ready to close, Mr. Pope. You know, this man went on just to be blessed of God because he was willing to let God change him. How about us tonight? Well, I've been blessed of God. Do we want God to continue to bless us? We do. Friend, church, we have some changing to do. Every one of us. Tonight, as we bow our heads and we close our eyes in reverence to the Lord, Spend this time looking within our hearts. What character flaws is God pointing out in us? What changes need to be made? Tonight as we come and we pray, let's get a hold of God. Let's look to him and let him touch us tonight and change our lives. She begins to sing and we come and we begin to pray. God bless you tonight is our prayer.